many of us fall into a certain age group. Those older millennials who grew up in the analogue years just before the internet, when maybe one kid in your class had a sky dish. Back then, television wasn't the splintered experience it is now, where dad's in his man cave watching Spanish football, mum's got a Midsummer Murders on her tablet, and the kids six hours into a Twitch stream from some bloke in a jester's hat who bought a mansion full of replica swords from playing Minecraft. For those who lived out their formative years in the early 90s, Saturday nights were generally spent with your family, in front of the 14-incher, watching whatever happened to be on the only four channels which existed. In hindsight, these were shows you'd only ever watch in those exact circumstances, the human equivalent of going out for a few hours and leaving the radio on for a dog. Before the 10 o'clock film, Saturday nights were the buffet at Entertainment's Wake, a snooker-based quiz hosted by Gammon King Jim Davidson. Stars in their eyes. Beadles about. That's show business. Blind date. And of course, Noel's house party. While well, caught in the midst of it, the inane weirdness of what we were scoffing down just slipped on by. And looking back, these evenings have the sense of a collective dream. Implanted memories from aliens or the Matrix. I mean... What an audience! Thank you very much and welcome to Full Swing, a new game show based on golf. In revisiting the era, few series give off this disconnected sense of the past quite as strongly as ITV's You Bet. Running for nine years between 1988 and 1997, You Bet saw members of the public claiming they could perform a specific task while a panel of celebrities scored points by betting on whether or not they'd succeed. These challenges were a mix of physical feats and memory tricks, like John Fashionu trying to beat a mechanical digger at penalties, or identifying the model of a car solely by the sound of its door slamming. And one wonders how many crippling gambling addictions found their genesis there. One minute, you're thinking, Yes, a deputy headmaster from Bristol probably could fit a hundred peas in his mouth. Next thing, your wife's leaving because you've lost the family home in a coin toss. As with bar bets, merely proffering a stunt gives away that, most of the time, the contestant can do it. And it's one of those shows, like Mastermind, which makes viewers ask themselves, what would I do if I were on there? Me. I'd identify the exact date of a Noel's house party by tasting a single spoonful of gunge. Very few of its 101 episodes survived into the YouTube era, with what little we have taking the form of clips, uploaded by past contestants, or of challenges notable by their failure, like the boy attempting to identify cast members of the bill by only their mouths or ears. Graham Cole, PC Tony Stamp. Oh no! Oh no! Another clip involving skateboarders features a young Matt Pritchard from Dirty Sanchez, looking surly in the green shirt. Unlike his future challenges, nobody takes a paintball to the ball bag. You Bet was a remake of long-running German show, Bet and Das. And while ITV's version utilised the likes of Gaz Top, Willie Thorne and Bruno Brooks, the original had a slightly different calibre of guest. Outside of its native country, it's most famous for a live accident where a contestant was paralysed after betting he could jump over a speeding car. R1 had three hosts over its run, but we'll begin with the original and best, with an episode from the Brucey years. And now, here's your host on You Bet, Bruce Forsyth. Like John Williams' Superman, or the theme to Blind Date, 
the tune's one of those where the melody sings the name of the show. You bet, you bet, pay our poor Bruce or break your legs. In Bruce's opening joke, he beats out Chegger's speed record for four I means, with a flurry of I saids. Yes. So, I mean, how, I mean, th this one, obviously, I mean, how long, I mean, it was one that I said, well, that's lovely. I said, I'm, I'm so thrilled. I said, I said, what did you say to him? Celebrities playing along this week are Bob Holness of Blockbusters, rock chick Susie Quattro, and anime Sherlock Holmes, John McCreerick, who immediately drops his card and has to bend down and pick it up. Younger viewers may be shocked at this version of John McCreerick, McCreerick 1.0 before he went on Big Brother and realised he'd get more work playing a professional grotesque. A cartoon chauvinist, eating his own bogeys and harping on about great big tits. This is the Rocky Maivia to McCreerick's post-Big Brother, The Rock. Though if we're discussing the evolution of Big John McSee, let's remember what he looked like in the 1970s. Even in this earlier incarnation, he's still a troublemaker. Get in line, will you, please? <laughs> you, no, you must get in line. Fine. So... The audience are betting too, for charity, and they've all got a yes-no button. Or to be specific... And to enable you to bet, you each have a Brucey button. Have you found your Brucey button? Yeah! The sheer age of the audience here, they must remember when actual buttons first came in. Though she doesn't get to do much, he's got a co-host in Ellis Ward. And hello, my darling. Now, what have you been up to this week, my darling? Well, for... They overcomplicate the format by having each challenge sponsored by a guest or by Bruce himself, punishing them with a forfeit should it fail. I suppose this opens up the possibility of John McCreerick being made to streak through the studio with a rolled up copy of the Racing Post jammed up his farter. After some more Brucey patter. Right now, Blockbusters has turned into a blockbuster, hasn't it? Bob's challenge is up first. And Jerry and Tom say they can lather and shave each other, in turn, blindfold, using cutthroat razors. Did I take a wrong turn into the dark web? As the audience make up their minds, there's some classic have a think while pushing your button music. Make your bet. And do have a bet at home. Have a bit of fun. Have a bet with grandma or granddad or mum and dad or your sister and brother. If it should go wrong for you, what are you prepared to do as a forfeit? I'm prepared, if anybody has got a big hairy spider, to sort of yes. handle it. It's like being back at school. If you lose this game of slapsies, right, you have to touch some dog muck. And it's all perfectly normal entertainment watching a couple of blindfolded fellas shave each other. Three minutes starting from now. Away you go. Note how the razor's right next to his mic, so you can hear the scrape of follicles, which is an absolute thrill ride for the audience. Stuff like this really makes you appreciate how long three minutes actually is. Get your towel around you. And this is where you take over. All right, Tom? That's it. We thank you so much. A well-earned Betsy. Oh, well, there you. they go. Off you go. And John spent every second of it dying to get this cracking gag in. Unfortunately, John said no, so you get nothing. Close shave, Bruce. A close shave. <laughs> Although, to be honest, due to our host, that is about the level. Tom, 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 yeah. Tom, Tom, and, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you start playing cat and mouse with me, all right? Now. Whether it's pop music or musical shows, here's a lady that's at home with both. 
Uh, she's not alone at the moment, she's here. Donna Joyce. You're Donna Joyce? Yeah. I see. Did your mother want twins? <laughs> <laughs> And it was, um, it was Donna Joyce. Yes, right. your mother wanted twins. <laughs> I thought I said we'd give him a second chance, but he's gone now. OK. Way out of line. King of the catchphrases. We'll be back in a bit. You can bet on it. Then we see what a forfeit consists of. Now, Melvin Hayes from last week had to do a forfeit, which was to be a magician's assistant. I'm sorry, what? Not much of a punishment, is it? stood with his hands in his pockets with the great Ali Bongo. Bruce, if they fail, my forfeit is to just go home and watch Netflix, and maybe you have to give me 50 quid as well. And wank me off. <laughs> what was that last one again, my darling? What's Susie's forfeit if she fails? <laughs> I'm not really prepared to do it, but it's something I wouldn't like to do. You would like to do it. I wouldn't like to be a waitress. Please, God, don't let me experience a minimum wage job. She's got an eight-year-old who can identify windmills from photos. And as Bruce hunts for a volunteer to select them, keep an eye on the woman in the front row. Thank you, my darling. Now, who should we have here tonight? Relief at not being picked? Or does he have rank B.O.? How did you spend your Saturday nights in the late 80s? Trading ecstasy-flavoured spit with a stranger at an illegal rave? Or watching a man pick out black and white photographs of windmills for a boy? Truly, we are the lost generation. How are you? All right. What? And do you have any other hobbies, apart from the windmills here? Steam trains. Steam trains. Oh, you love steam trains. Good. Have you got any? A train set. A train set. I see. <sighs> of course, the lad tears through the correct answers. Saving Susie Quattro the indignity of pretending to be a waitress for 30 seconds. John McCreerick's challenge has a fisherman trying to chuck his cast through a target. Mm. Adding to the excitement, even though it's pre-taped, they don't edit out the bits where he's winding the line back in. You see, they think that's 130 yards of line. Oh, he's short Just again. She's short. And despite the unusual technique of using the rod as a hat, he fails. Yeah, still, how many left has he got now? Everyone who watched this, when we get to the gates of heaven, will have to defend this to God. Five minutes of precious life. Thank you very much for being here. Off you go then. For his forfeit, like a teacher taking a paper plate of whipped cream to the face during end of term assembly, John pretends he doesn't want to milk a cow. And now, it's time for the rap. Sorry, for a minute I thought Bruce said it's time for the rap. And now, it's time for the rap. No, nope, that's what he said. And judging by their reaction, it's exactly why the audience are here. Are you ready, rappers? Yeah! Come on now. Do you want to bet on it? You bet. You bet. Well, you better get on it. You bet. So don't fret. Get set. Are you ready? You bet. Great. How about it? When anyone asks what sort of music I like, I just tell them, gangster rap. And not that modern M&M rubbish, but the classic hardcore stuff, when it was proper fearless and incendiary. NWA or Death Row Records, or Sir Bruce Forsyth from The Generation Game. <laughs>
I'm going to make a takeover bid for you. I'm going to shake you up and get rid of you. The time has come. The White House here. I'd like to say I'm sorry, but who's to say? Take over bid. I'm going to make a takeover bid. I'm going to be the first to to shake over you. Now, as you are probably aware, I had to do another forfeit last week. It, it was to be a dustman for a day. Most of these forfeits are just the embarrassment of real jobs actual people have to do to feed their families. Maybe all bin men are losing contestants on You Bet. Naturally, I'm a celebrity astrologer, but some child confused Tosh Line's chin for DCI Burnside, so this is me until clocking off. And of course he's not actually working. It's a fish out of water comedy sketch which doesn't come across great in the era of clapping key workers. Last year we were practically offering use of our holes through the letterbox. Saturday nights this went out. Prime time. Some real Les Dennis laughter show quality comedy. The next challenge is making 24 omelettes in 3 minutes, where we get some lovely alliteration. I'd like to remind you, you're not only betting for, the, for charity, you're betting for the fate of Forsyth in the form of a forfeit. And thanks to you bet's overly complex accounting system, chosen charities get practically fuck all. 266, we're going to add this series another thousand pound to that! <laughs> Plus our winning celebrity over there, 266, which gives us a grand total tonight of £1,532. The bogeys for John McCrick's rider probably cost more than that. And, uh, well, that's all for this week. I'd like to thank everybody, and I do mean everybody. There's a dangerous feeling in the air. A brewing lawlessness and one wrong word could be the spark which ignites it. I hope Bruce doesn't do anything stupid. See you next week. Do you want to bet on it? Yes! Where do you bet again on it? Yes! Do you want to bet on it? Yes! Where do you bet again on it? Yes! We jump forwards to 1994, where Bruce has been replaced by human Bungle the Bear, Matthew Kelly, for a series which is the same, only even worse. Although he opens with a monologue so weird, it must be part of a forfeit. Then today, the whole studio became possessed by the High Lord of Chaos and Misery, the Demon of Throg from the Dark World of Quarax. Ah? Huh? If it's not a plumber getting in the way, it's an electrician or an exorcist. Never trust an exorcist called Tex. <laughs> He turns up, fag hanging out of his mouth, bum hanging out of his trousers. <laughs> right, mate, where's your demon then? I tell you, ridding the studio of mythical demons is not a cheap business. Is this you bet or ghost watch? Is Alistair Crowley going to come out and wager he can drink a cauldron full of spunk? By now there are four celebrity players. Louise Jameson, Anna Walker, Bob Carrollges and Melvin Hayes, who sits on his voting button. Welcome, how lovely. I feel I should mention this YouTube comment. There seems to be a high volume of homosexuals on this show. Nothing wrong with that, but the ratio is quite incredible. Note that nobody featured here identifies as gay. Challenges this week include a fencer who can hit playing cards stuck to a wheel. A smutty line here really demonstrates the gulf between audiences. From Brucey's elderly fan base to the sort of dynamic young sexual beings who turn up to watch Matthew Kelly. Well, I've seen him in action with his weapon, and the one thing. <laughs> the one... You really pulled me off there, right? Now, as you are probably aware, I. Nothing. Speaking of which, how did you feel after lockdown? Heavy balls. I'm only having a laugh. It's just the setup to our next challenge. 
Christy Mullins from Cork has been European road bowling champion since 1988. Is going to attempt to cover a distance of 1,500 metres in five bowls or less. Just back from a shopping trip at Dan Flash's, Matthew talks us through an Irishman chucking a ball down a runway. We're into the mid-90s now, so how were you spending your Saturday nights? Mosh pit at a grunge gig? Puking up Alco Pops in the high street before getting your fingers and tops? At least we could console ourselves in witnessing some of the era's wackiest body language. I think I've probably got the idea. Right. Okay. See you at the start. <laughs> Go for it! A challenge to build a giant video wall of his face leads to this impressively dreadful joke. I reckon the best thing about this actually is that you're going to end up with your very own Matthew Talley, aren't you? <laughs> Matthew Talley! <laughs> but like the bowling, there's no commentary just the muttering and grunting of the men in a game of dystopian Tetris which inadvertently results in a Matthew Kelly obelisk. Now last week, Pat Sharp's frisbee challenges went a bit oops with the hoops. And here's the latest one from Pat Sharp's frisbee challenges. <laughs> gonna give me a hand because I've got to clean out young Tracy here. Please. Imagine being punished with holding a spider in this post I'm a celebrity post jackass world. Ant and Deck would be shoving it in a blender with a load of kangaroo knobs and giving you a straw. If you teleported the innocent, gasping audiences of 1994 to today's television, they'd die of shock. Is this a uh, giant millipede here? <laughs> You're wearing all the oh, spooky! <laughs> the next challenge has a bloke who can look at newspaper headlines for three seconds and guess the amount of letters. OK, could we have the first headline, please? 18. 19. Well, next. 21. Yes. Next, please. Gold. 31. Well done. Next, please. 24. Good. For the final task, Matthew's in Norway, where a mountain biker reckons he can beat a skier in a race. But no amount of you bet's patented tension music can distract from this really, really looking like someone doing a downhill poo. Perhaps aware that, unlike Brucey, he doesn't have the urban cachet to pull it off, Matthew doesn't end on a rap. We'll be back soon with lots more challenges. Join us then. Good night. But that was all a long time ago. It's the 2020s now, and I don't have to sit through these anymore. I've got lots of options on how to spend my Saturday nights. Refreshing the same three social media apps, or staring at the wall thinking about my poor life choices. Will I never be watching one of these ever again? Well, you better get on it. Yeah. I'll go out.